Yeah, welcome back to DXB today. Hope you're enjoying the episode. I certainly am as we uh, uh, take a closer look at the fashion industry in all its guises. I know it's difficult to do in just 60 minutes, but uh, we've got some extraordinary guests, including, of course, our next guest. Uh, Nizreen Shaker is no stranger to the fashion industry, founder and CEO of Showcase, joining us now. Thanks so much. It'd be lovely to see you. Likewise. Great to have you with us here on what is a topic close to your heart. And I just want to sort of pick up on a, on a topic I'm sure you listened to there a minute ago about consumer behavior at the moment. You know, that sustainability buzzword in the world of fashion. And we immediately think all oh, brands must be doing more, but surely the onus is on the consumer to buy more sustainably or more ethically. Has, have consumer demands or consumer trends changed phenomenally in recent years? Uh, it surprised me when I was the CEO of Net-a-Porte in the region, the most successful sub-franchise was Net Sustain. So whenever we did any research, and that always surprised us because we thought the region was really behind in terms of the consumers wanting that, but they did want it. And one of the questions I think one of you asked was, is it easy for the consumer to know that? And I, I would actually say that the customer is ready. Platforms like ours need to do more in terms of making it easy for customers to find sustainable products, but it's not easy to create sustainable products yeah. you know there's uh, what does it mean it's it's a very wide range that's why i think you know when we start talking about circularity you know that's closer in other words don't throw away fabrics reuse them for other designs uh, we did that with one very big designer in the region or when you're ready to sell your products end of season a lot of big designers feel like they shouldn't be doing that because it kind of mistreats their brand mm -hmm. but they should this is all part of sustainability it's not just about fabrics and how you make things. I think you know the nuances on us as well, not to buy more jeans because that's where you know a lot of water is, is taken. I think four gallons of water per pair of jeans. So I think we have we all have enough pairs of jeans. Um, but you know it's it's a mutual effort. But definitely the customer is ready, yeah. right? We need to be listening to them more. Yeah, Nasreen, I know that you moved from entertainment to fashion yes. and now showcase as well is happening. So can you please tell us more about that shift and yes. your company? So I, I'm basically doing what I've been doing for brands for a very long time. Okay. And I just read today, for example, that a local brand went global. It's a lot about how brands in the Middle East can go west. Mm -hmm. So that's the role I'm playing because the Middle East, as, as great as it is, and we're very fashion forward, we're not a very big market. We're not big enough for a brand to make it in terms of cash, in terms of a business. So we definitely need the big retailers abroad. We need the large customer bases. We need North America. We need the big markets to make the brands that are very, very successful here, make it broadly and, and become household names abroad as well. Yeah, and about Showcase? Showcase is a consultancy. Okay. So we help brands from east to west and west to east. Okay. And let's say a lot of the brands today, they have a great creative designer who knows exactly what the collection should be. What's really missing is how to bit create a business out of it. So how do you make sure that you've got the cash to, to sustain the next collection? How do you make sure that your costs are under control? How do you make sure that you are focused enough on what you do best? So for example, if a brand is an inclusive size brand and they do a lot of uh, sizes that are for the l larger set, let's say, or inclusive sizing as we call it, that they don't start producing sizes for a different range, that they remain true to their story. That's where we come in. We make sure that we package the brand in a way that buyers understand it. And when you hear of a statistic that 50% of brands fall through by their fourth year, mm -hmm. that doesn't make it very easy. It means a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of hope is going into creating a brand just for it to disappear in the fourth year. It's disappointing for fans. I mean, we all have a lot of brands that we love that are not around anymore. So our job is to make sure that they stick around and, and stay longer and designers do their thing and we do the business side of it. It's amazing. <laughs> And let's talk about e-commerce because there is a huge yes. conversation about e-commerce and how it's not really a safe, protected space anymore. It's super challenging and some of the biggest brands have actually are, are struggling, whether it's finance or actually have gone under. Um, how does, how do you stay afloat? If, it's so difficult. There's so much focus on. Yes. So unfortunately, a lot of brands went towards the, let's say the Farfetch platform. I know you didn't want to mention names, 
But there are companies in Dubai where 45% of their revenue comes from Farfetch alone. Mm -hmm. So when Farfetch is not giving them that kind of business, they're going to run out of cash very soon. We're talking about a matter of months. So that's very damaging. And we've relied heavily on, on a platform like Farfetch. Matches is an administration. What that means is that they're not going to get their cash. I expect a lot of our brands in the region are going to be at least two seasons out of date now, and they need to play that catch up because they simply don't have the cash. And the capital is not easily and readily available for fashion brands. You know, it's not like if you're doing, a, let's say, a tech play where you're going to find a lot more fintech. So the way to do that is to diversify in real life is coming back. Right. So going back into department stores, uh, it, very cool department stores like Wow out of Madrid are doing very cool things. We need to help them go back into department stores. Harrods is doing great to support local Middle Eastern brands, Selfridges as well, the US. So they need to start diversifying where that money comes from, definitely. And then finding new ways to do direct to consumer because then they own their customer. It's not easy, it's expensive to do direct to consumer. Cost of acquisition is ridiculously high, but they need to start developing that relationship for that repeat business yeah. and not rely on the middleman. So Nisreen, you mentioned uh, earlier about like uh, brands going global. What advice would you get, say, for a, a brand that is wanting to go global and not just stick to a local base? One thing I would say is PR alone is not enough. Right. You definitely need someone to help you on distribution, which is uh, where we come in. And there are others like us who help you sell, okay. right? Not just help you PR your brand. If you dress a celebrity, they're never, not necessarily going to buy from you again. What you're looking for is a customer base globally Visibility. who are going to buy from you. Yeah. They're actually going to put their money behind your brand. And sometimes that could be a CEO or a key opinion leader. Uh, I know Roseman supports a lot of local brands. Um, so people like that help the brand grow versus going after a red carpet mm -hmm. show, for example. A lot of brands uh, die in terms of cash and struggle because of many retainers that they have to pay. So you're looking for people who are going to help you sell the collection. Question to you both as well, and it's that ongoing debate at the moment. I'm interested because I know we've touched on it a little bit, but you know, one of those things we were talking about a lot in recent years was bricks and mortar shops are dead. There's no, lo there's no longer a future for them. You can't say that in a place like Dubai because there I, are a few malls at the moment. But. I will tell you, I've always said brick and mortar is, um, will always be there. But will always be there. Will always be there. But what I believe, and Nisreen, I don't know, we can talk about that, is I think you're going to have less stores globally, but every store that's out there, if you have a brand, it will be the ultimate experience. So when you go into a particular shop, the consumer will have the world of that brand at, at a, as a sensory experience. So the smell, the touch, the tech, the service. And so you might, it might it'll end up being like a destination store. Mm. And that's what makes Dubai so special because okay. when you walk into any store, especially in something like a Dubai mall where it's an ultimate experience, you are getting that ultimate experience. So. But it's gone back. It's gone back I to think real it's life. Uh, young consumers, let's talk about the alphas and the, the Zs, whatever letter yeah. you want to use. Um, <laughs> they've all gone back to real life. So you see them in the malls. Uh, you see them in Westfield. So we're not just talking about the Middle East. We're talking about globally. And they go into Sephora, right? So we're talking about tweens at Sephora with an average basket of $300. And they're trying things out from queuing you know, outside. Queuing outside, right? So in real life is back, yeah. but it has to be an experience, like Roseman said. There's this concept called Wow out of Madrid. They do a great department store, the way department stores should be, where every concept is an experience. Wow. Yeah. Uh, look, we could talk for hours on this one, and we probably will as soon as yeah. cameras have stopped rolling. But unfortunately, we're going to leave it there for now. Thank but you so much. Can't thank you enough for uh, all you. of your input. Thanks for joining us. It's uh, lovely to see all of you again. Nice to see you back. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. But now I believe it is it time for DXB in 60. Ahmed, you're yes, the man with the questions. So, Rosamund, oh, wow. <laughs> 60 seconds that we're going to put on the clock just to know more about you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to cue the clock in three, two, one. If you weren't in the fashion industry, what would you be doing? I'd be in hotels and hospitality. Okay. Uh, what is your motto in life and in work? 
don't look back. You're not going that way. Always look forward. Okay, that's nice. Um, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Oh, to stop time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just a little more time. More what, time. Just yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite piece of clothing? Oh, that's a like one piece, if you can think. That's a tough one. I you know. Can't ask the stream that one. <laughs> this is like a tough one. Um, I think someone just has a really good memory. Uh, it's probably like a. Um, to be honest, it's it's a piece of jewelry that my parents gave me. You okay. know, and so uh, for me, it's everything is about sentimental and, and thoughtful gifts, and that's important to me. I like that. And I go to a place here in Dubai. I go to a place in Dubai would be. Can I, can I say the okay. restaurant? Or okay, like we've got three seconds. Three seconds. I, I would say my, my second home is like Il Boro. I just crave <laughs> okay. that pasta. And I know the time is up, but I just want to ask you, why Dubai? Dubai is the best of East meets West. It's ingrained in family values. It's the best service. Um, it is a safe place. And for someone like me, and I speak on Nisreen as well, is for women to build their businesses here, it has been such an honor to, and I'm so proud to be a part of the fashion ecosystem. Talk, Yvonne, it's been an honour to host you both. Thanks uh, for having us. for better guests uh, for this topic. So, Rosamund, lovely to see thank you as you. always. Uh, don't be a stranger, we'll have you back very yes, soon. Yes, can't and wait. Green, thank you thank as well. Thank you, it's lovely to see everyone. <laughs> yeah, getting back together. Put the, put the band back <laughs> yeah. together. <laughs> together. Uh, talking of bands, uh, we've got the Queen of Country coming your way here in just a few moments' time. Playing us out will be Lauren Clare. Stay with us.